Martin Hammond has bipolar disorder, like an estimated 350 million people worldwide. His greatest challenge is how to live an orderly life amid alternating bouts of mania and depression. I didn't feel so good this morning. When I woke up, I felt as if there was a grey fog in my head. And that happens often. It's not immediately obvious that Martin suffers from depression, but he often struggles with ordinary daily tasks. Even getting up in the morning can be tough. Certain routines can help him get through the day, for example, meditating frequently or talking to others and speaking openly about his situation. I think that I've learned to tell people around me who I am and how I react, and this helps. Sometimes I tell friends to take it easy with me if I'm feeling a bit down. In the periods of depression, Martin is often plagued by feelings of hopelessness, emptiness and guilt. Six years ago, he was so depressed that he decided to commit suicide. In the manic phases, he is full of energy and feels very creative. He explores the contrasts in his feelings and the music that he composes. There are many feelings, but I've packed them into different chapters and they conjure up very deep or special or meaningful moments for me. One of them is the evening that I try to end my life. These are all feelings of joy, sadness, the whole spectrum, so to speak. Psychotherapy and medication helped Martin get over his suicidal feelings. Now he gets by without any treatment. Sport and breathing exercises help him to keep the depression under control. He is preparing to go on stage to talk about his experiences. He wants to share his coping mechanisms with others, though he knows that they might not work with everyone who is affected with bipolar disorder. He's to attend a forum for exchanging ideas and promoting personal advancement. I'm very nervous. I want people to really understand what's burning in me and what I want to bring across. I want to encourage people to make the steps that I've made in life. But there is still plenty to do. Along with his friend and manager Max, Martin is planning to walk from his home in Cologne to his hometown Zwolle in the Netherlands, 200 kilometers away. The idea is to prepare him physically and mentally for the speech. We talked a lot about different things, about Martin and about me as well. And then we came to a point where we thought that we had to go public and reach a wider audience, that people should listen to Martin and a framework should be created. That's something I want to help with. Martin has so many ideas, so many emotions. And that means he wants to get things done fast. But perhaps I can help find a direction. Martin is planning to meet people from his past as he walks, people who know what he went through. Walking is one aspect, and the different people, places and stories are another aspect. But I also want to show people that they can achieve anything if they want to. For Martin, sport is possibly the most important means of dealing with his depression. It creates a balance between the body and the mind and helps him prove to himself that he can do something.
I know people who don't have legs who can climb. There's a woman here who doesn't have any legs and she manages to climb up. I think we're only as limited insofar as we set ourselves limits. And that's a part of the depression to say that we can't do something. But what can't we do? There are days when I feel I can't get out of bed, but I can get out of bed. I have arms and legs. Just before he is due to set off for the Netherlands, Martin suffers a setback. Instead of going to Zwolle on foot, he's off to the nearest hospital. And the doctor's orders are clear. It's an infection of the joint. It's bacterial, so it's in the tissue. I'm known for being someone who will follow his own plan, but the doctor was adamant that I shouldn't do the walk. He said it was a very bad idea to walk 200 kilometers. He said my body needed calm and relaxation. Verena Heinz is Martin's ex-girlfriend. He was planning to meet her on his walk, but instead she has come to see him in Cologne. She wanted to comfort and encourage him ahead of his speech. She knows what such a setback might do, having had first-hand experience of his depression. I think that what was difficult for me was that he wasn't predictable. The ups and downs and highs and lows, which change so fast, and then I would think, here he is again, and now he's there. That was the biggest challenge. A few days later, Martin is off to the Netherlands by car. The cast is gone, but he's still not allowed to walk. His parents were on holiday six years ago when he called them and told them he was going to end his life. We felt powerless and sad, and it was very difficult to understand because Martin also has a lot of humor and a joyful side. It was really difficult for us as parents, and we had feelings of guilt. You start wondering what you did wrong, what didn't you see. It's not easy to accept this side. The next day, Martin took a lethal mixture of sleeping tablets and painkillers. I didn't care at that point. I just didn't want to have these feelings. I couldn't bear the pain anymore. But something made me think that I shouldn't do it. This can't be the solution, whatever the problem is. So I went to the toilet and I threw up. I was quite lucid from that point on. And I called the emergency services. Now Martin knows how to deal with the ups and downs better. Bathing in ice-cold water helps him. When he undergoes a setback, he tries to use it to find some force instead of sinking back into a black hole. That's what he plans to talk about later today. The cold does me good. So I wanted to make sure that I did it one more time before my speech so that all the energy, all my thoughts came together instead of being dispersed. Body and mind, everything in symbiosis, so that I'll be able to go in as calm and collected as possible. Now that he's ready, he and his friend and manager Max go off together to the venue where the event is taking place. There's a bit of fine tuning before he finally goes on stage. He's nervous after weeks of preparing for the 18-minute long speech. My name is Martin Hemmen, and Germany, we need to talk. I'm nervous. I'd rather swim under a sheet of ice, climb into the ring, or go climbing without a rope. Shall I tell you a few more things that I'd rather do? But he doesn't. It's time to be serious.
My name is Martin Hemmen and I suffer from heavy depression. I always start suppressing myself, my questions, my emotions, hiding everything that makes me me. It's probably better just to function. I start looking for excitement to find a balance. I think everything is a great idea. Alcohol, drugs, driving with my eyes closed for more and more time. I put my health at risk, sex, fights, destruction. Six years ago, when my depression was so bad that I didn't know what to do, I tried to end my life. Why didn't I talk? There's a simple reason why I didn't talk. People don't talk about mental problems. I learned that early on, at school, at the club, at home, or with friends. But now I'm talking. I'm not going to stop talking. Germany, we have to talk. I forgot half of it. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. <laughs> How was it for you? I don't know yet. I'm still completely overwhelmed by emotions, feelings. It was great, but I don't know what it was yet. I think I'll figure it out in the next few hours, the feelings. It went really fast. There are many enthusiastic people waiting in the foyer for Martin. People who also suffer from depression, or know people with depression. Martin has given them hope by speaking so openly. Hope that they too will find a way of dealing with depression. <laughs> 